We don't think you can find anyone who knows more about the Bernie Madoff scandal than our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. And he has written a new book, which is answering all those questions we've all had all this time, and also a stunning personal detail about the Madoffs called the Madoff Chronicles, Inside the Secret World of Bernie and Ruth, and it hits bookstores this morning as Brian is here with us now. It's good to see you. Good to be here. I, I, I'm reading the pages, and I told you this, I kept going, what? Huh? What? Let me just start with that scene we saw daily, over and over again, at the apartment windows. And we looked and imagined what was going on inside, particularly when the curtains closed. And you say, some of the time at least? Some of the times they walked around naked, Bernie and Ruth. Uh, there were surveillance cameras there under the house arrest terms. They had to be told, remember, there are cameras here. We, we can see you. And uh, they would sit around at the kitchen table in this fabulous uh, penthouse apartment. And uh, Ruth would talk about the Gentiles being responsible for this. And Bernie was almost oblivious. Here he had been caught in the largest Ponzi scheme. And he was sort of going through, well, see, what boards do I have to resign? Told that one of his victims had committed suicide. Uh, Madoff's reaction was, well, that guy couldn't pick a stock if his life depended on it. It was almost as if he blamed the victim. He was weak. How do you know this? We have people inside who gave us rare access to what was going on, what was in the minds of, of Bernie and Ruth. I think we have a very good picture in this book of what was going on. Another portrait you paint is of Ruth's relationship right now to their sons, to their two sons, and she has called their behavior unconscionable and outrageous. They're furious with their sons, and the sons were, they claim they did not know until the day before the arrest. Uh, Madoff took them to the apartment, revealed that he was a fraud. Uh, they were upset. Uh, one of them was on the floor crying. Uh, he said, give me a week before you turn me into the FBI. Then you turn me in so you'll look innocent. They went to their lawyer who said, oh no, we're going to the prosecutors right now. They went that day to the prosecutors and their lawyer said, don't talk to your father, don't talk to your mother even ever again until this is resolved. Do you want to stay out of prison? And you say there's some reporting right now that they are looking at the sons for tax charges at this moment? Absolutely. There's a civil lawsuit being brought by the bankruptcy trustee. They took $30 million in so-called loans from their father. It was the investor's money that he stole, but they never declared that as income, which could be considered tax fraud. Well, I should tell everyone that there's all chapter on the SEC, and there is Bernie Madoff sweating bullets they're going to discover things. And of course, they're, they're looking right over an elephant in the room Absolutely. and you detail how this happens. It's staggering. They, they, they asked him, Diane, where are all the stocks you have? He had billions of dollars, supposedly. He said, well, this depository trust company holds them. He knew that was a lie. He figured it and was they, a Friday afternoon, Monday he'd be arrested. They took his word, never checked it out. Never called, never, never checked. checked it. If they had done that, that would have been the end of the scam. Uh, the other portrait is of, of a man who had two personalities, at least two. In, on the 19th floor, the public floor, he knew even down to the detail of the picture frame, what he wanted on every single desk of every employee. But on the 17th floor, where right. all this was going on, it was sort of paper clips and rubber bands holding together a chaos. Someone called it your crazy aunt's uh, basement. It looked like all kinds of stuff there. That's where the scam was operated, where they created these phony statements and where they put together the whole operation, this inner circle of people. And there, no dress code. People wore uh, the, you know, the, the, the shorts and hanging out the, upstairs the 17th, uh, 19th floor very very formal as you say high-tech looking this but the scam place was secret well, one thing I've always wondered was what did he say to himself about where this was going to end as it, it climbed higher and higher toward disaster and you have here a statement that he had told a visitor I just somehow hoped the world would end and that would have been a way out yeah. He had no other way out, and he knew that was it, and he thought he could keep this going. He told visitors that this had started early on in his career, in the 1960s, when he first opened business, when Ruth was keeping the books for him, and he had about a year of sleepless nights and said, I can do this. I can get away with this. Well, again, it's filled with extraordinary detail and in some ways a love story at the center of it, too, and, and also a great tragedy for all those who came in contact with him. And you have to read it. It is an excerpt you can see right now on Madoff Chronicles, abcnews.com slash books, but it's in bookstores today.